I'm Dandy Piatripala, the National Medical Director of Compassionate Care Hospice, uh, based here in Wilmington. And today's uh, talk is titled, To Feed or Not to Feed, uh, and Other Daunting Medical Decisions. It's ironic that I would be doing this talk today because as we speak, my father is headed for surgery and my own family is going to have some decisions to make. So, in a way that would not have been true last week, I understand what patients are going through. Many medical decisions are very confusing for your patients and for the families of your patients. Why are they so confusing? The issues involved may not be fully understood to them. Our system, uh, if you can call it that, is set up to sweep families and patients, and sometimes us, the doctors and nurses, down the path of least resistance. These common pathways are designed for what an average person would want in an average case. That may not be your patient. That may not be their family. The system will sometimes railroad them and you into the most used path. The most interventions, people feel like we have to do something, and doctors feel like we have to do something. We do, but the something we pick is what we have control over. It may sweep you into what somebody else thinks is best for the family or for the patient. Sometimes the family may feel like they weren't even asked. They may say, well, we don't know how he ended up in chemotherapy. Uh, they may have been asked, but in a way that they didn't even recognize. They have to speak up, and not every family and not every patient is used to doing that. With any proposed course of action, both risks and benefits have to be weighed. All options have both. The option of doing nothing at all in the face of a serious illness has both. The option of using tube feedings or not using tube feedings has both risks and benefits. And families should know about both before they decide on any intervention. So feeding tubes, chemotherapy, surgery, all of them have risks and benefits that we have to weigh. All medical treatments should have a goal. Be careful of any proposed treatments that don't seem to have a goal or don't have a realistic goal. For example, it may be recommended to a family to insert a feeding tube in a patient who has Alzheimer's disease. Now, what would the goal be? Can the quality of life be improved in that manner? Is the goal merely to prolong life as long as possible scientifically? And if so, is that a reasonable goal? Whose goal is that? Is that the patient's goal? Is that the family's goal? Or is that the doctor's goal that may have slipped in there somehow? Careful of statements like, quote, we are obligated to try, quote, this or that. We are never obligated to try anything except for what is best for our patient. Patients have autonomy. They make their own decisions from acceptable options. Families do it for them if they cannot. Delaware law sets up a specific hierarchy of decision makers. And this is even without a living will. Patients and their families can decline anything they want to decline. Very few exceptions to that. And feeding is not an exception to that. Delaware law says that enteral or parenteral nutrition and IV fluids are medical means like any other. And any competent patient has the right to accept them or decline them. And if you're not competent, your family makes that decision. They do not need to accept treatment that is not compatible with their goals for the patient. So it's the goals of the patient, and if the patient can't state his or her goals, the goals of the family that matter, not our goals. Decision-making order, by Delaware law, the spouse. If the spouse cannot make the decisions, either because the spouse is deceased or the spouse just can't cope with the decisions, adult children, then parents if they are capable, then brothers or sisters. Delaware law goes all the way down to the cousin level. It does not pick between members of the same category. In other words, if four adult children want a feeding tube inserted and three do not, the law doesn't say it's a majority vote. The law doesn't say it's the oldest child. Uh, and that's intentional. That's an intentional oversight in the law. Uh, just because you're older doesn't mean you have better medical judgment. What are the bounds of the authority? When making decisions for a family member and you're acting as surrogate decision maker, 
You cannot override the patient's expressed wishes, such as a living will. Surrogate decision makers are there to carry out the patient's wishes. They may not go against the patient's wishes. The doctor is there to carry out what the patient wants and may not go against what the patient wants. Other than that, surrogates make all the important decisions. That's why we have that system set up.